name is DC here. Welcome back to Incredibox. So today I am here with a giant one today, lads. This is replication by the main Chad Bozzy. Now, based on the description of what this mod actually says, is that this is a horror mod that takes place in the same universe of Orin Ao. We got three bonus characters as well. We got lore. We got the whole bit, dude. So we got a lot of shit to discuss in this one. Okay, that was entirely a switch up of vibes that I was not expecting. He looks like a ghoul. This is honestly kind of going for just like a way more bump and vibe than I thought it would. I'm not too sure. Also, by the way, the voices are red. That is, uh, that's a bit alarming. Just gotta be honest with you. Just gotta give my professional opinion on that one. But also based on the description of this mod is that this is a whodunit story. So one of the bitches involved in this whole catastrophe is responsible for a bunch of bullshit. And we gotta figure out who the hell that is. <laughs> Oh, we fucked the lamp, dude. Wait, I need baby girl in here. Yo, look at her go. Hang on, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Oh. Hey. It's a decent way to kick off your morning, you know? You got some vanilla coffee with some bumping beats. Hey, shit. Honestly, I don't really know how to feel about it so far because I feel like the sounds that I'm being presented with and like just the overall vibe of this before I started are just like not at all similar. Posy 22 male. As owner of Posy Co Industries, I was just a guy with no such talent until I got a call back from the agency telling me I could start my own company. Mm -hmm, yes. And so I did with pride in my gut. <laughs> in Jimmy Chong's. I saw a friend of mine approach me and said that I should start a cloning facility. Who the fuck just says that? Hey, lad, you know what? You should totally do this summer. Some say cloning is a bad thing, since alternating someone's genetics can have side effects and can harm someone's life. However, this is my life, and I wanted to give it a try. My mate says he's fine with it, so I built Posico and created a factory full of horrifying secrets. Why would you do that? That that seems like all kinds of negative nancies. I say horrifying because I cannot forget the incidents that happened here. I am a monster. All right, cool. I want to give this shit for just seeming like another mod that is just like you know alternate humans, some kind of facility, because that whole concept has been done to death, but this is in the same universe as Ornale, and kind of like Corrupt Box, it like technically expands the universe, so I'm kind of okay with it, because we're building something that was pre-existing, and not really just giving me a new thing that you're just pretending is new when it's really not, so honestly, I'm fine with it, I'm fine with it, because we're just building a previous story that was already introduced, so that's fine with me. So now we got Sally27. Sally was the receptionist of the cozy cone. Sally was a receptionist who is very passionate with her own job and always does what she can to make sure the company stays to a high class status. As I knew, she was one of the brightest people I knew. I cloned her so the company got more inviting and heartwarming as you enter it. Sadly, though her clone started beating her up with a clipboard and ended up in a fight because of the unawareness of the side effects of the machine since it wasn't fully finished. I didn't know about this since it happened during the night while I was away. Why is the eye right there so fucked? <laughs> Sally survived, however, and is now hiding in her house, hoping her clone won't take her place. That is fucking terrifying. So is this cheeky little bitch that we're seeing on the side, is that the clone or is that the person? Because like, is that the person all fucked up or is that just what the clone looks like? Because I'm assuming that that's what the clone looks like because it looks like- God damn, this is good ass coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had coffee so good that you just can't ex you, you, you just can't contain your excitement? A lamp stayed two years. Gender. Uh. This was the lamp that had been sitting on the cabinet of the reception and was used to light up the room. I like to have this close to me as possible. I am not the biggest fan of the dark. No, I respect that. Becky, bitch. Just out of curiosity, are there any Beckys watching this? I don't mean Rebecca. I mean your birth name is Becky. Like, is anybody doing that? Because, like, I have never met a person in my life named Becky who wasn't an asshole. Like, literally every single one of them I knew was a criminal in some kind of way. <laughs> For countless years, I have been struggling a lot on how to become a great person. Same. So I have been in contact with my psychologist quite a lot because of the trauma I keep going through. Later on, I introduced Becky to the facility until one of my co-workers saw her as a witness and put her to sleep. That is the 
hardest line I've ever heard. She was then taken to be a part of the ATC, the Android Transformation Center. This is depressing. Which she then was one of the first people to become a cyborg and has an inbuilt function to do what she can to protect me. However, she was hacked and now wants me for her own. I thought she already had a boyfriend anyways. Name redacted, age unneeded. Why is N capital? Gender female, the third person who was cloned in my facility so she can appear happier in her own life. It's not like she was happy before anyway. That's all kinds of wholesome. Okay, I want to make this as like simple as possible because like I really want to hear a lot of these guys on their own. Give me some fire. I have been delivered the fire. All right, let's see what we got out with the folks. I like that guy's design a lot, you know, actually. effect I think it is I'm not actually too sure it sounds great I just don't know if it's an effect or not oh okay wait a minute oh now we made it to the main meal everything that we've just done currently nah bitch that was all the demo that was all the appetizer oh, oh it sounds amazing it genuinely sounds awesome Oh, dude, that was a wind-up boy like I've ever seen it. Tell like an 8-bit vibe. Listen. Hey, you know what, dude? This mod actually kicks ass. I can't really say anything yet because the whole, like, who done it side of the lore really hasn't come up that much yet. But in terms of the lore, in terms of the sound, hey, I I'm chilling, lad. I'm, I'm having fun. Ooh. That's a weird noise. It doesn't really fit with what we got, but I do like it. Hey! Oh. I really like this shit! Now, hang on, wait, I want to hear Baby Girl with a boo. Oh. Dude, just these two alone. These two sounds alone I could be at a brothel with! Man, that just it just sounds so intense John 38 as I hid away from the clones trying to kill people to take their <laughs> Can I say that out loud? I'm not sure if I can say those four words all back to back I may have to censor that just because YouTube really is that much of a stickler about it <laughs> I hired a hitman under the name Jeron <laughs> Jeron <laughs> I hired a hitman under the name of John to kerplungle off the clones who were too hostile towards the people I did the tests on. Luckily though, he understood what was going on from the newscast of the incidents. I talked to him of what happened since I wasn't the one who made the clones in the first place and wasn't the one to blame. Now he's on my side, guarding me from the attacks that may happen if I'm not careful with my choices. Yes, enticing, perhaps even riveting. Oh, this one is just X. This guy's a badass sound effect, you know? I don't know who this guy is, so let's just call him him Mr. X for now. Ooh, juicy, exciting. Mr. X is a shadowy figure in a black cloak who just watches my actions for some reason. He might be the person who was involved with Giffany becoming the monster she was and possibly creating the clones to kill off the girls who I was close with so she can be with me forever. This is, what is, what is happening with this one, lad? There is so much shit to unpack with just this one alone. The guy looks like a frostbite finger, you know, so that's something. Oh my god, I spilled my fucking coffee. Holy shit. God damn it, hang on, wait, I gotta pause. I can't believe that I spilled my damn coffee, bro. That genuinely pisses me off. Fucking hell, man. I can't, but I'm sitting here talking about how good my fucking coffee is and I spilled the damn shit. I can't believe it. Oh my God, it got on my phone panels. How the fuck did it do that? Bro, that bitch got launched. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> bro, this whole room smells like such strong vanilla, it's not even funny. <laughs> Jose, 31, non-binary. I have always feared the monsters I encountered at Pawsey Co., so I never wanted to go back. But why this guy? Why is this person the guy that terrifies me the most? Because they look like this, you fucking knob. Just hang from the ceiling, watch me write stuff about the company, and have me quiver in the cold breeze of the broken air conditioner. That is a fire line. They rarely spoke and smile at me 24-7. They could feel cold. So cold. However, Lillian was unaffected by this, since she had this experience before with someone else. Someone named Dave Rod! Whoa! <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, lads. This is like a actual like thing that like it like expands the universe of the story. That's why I'm cool with this one. I know that it's all about fucking just more like black goo, whatever. It's more about facilities, it's more about alternate humans. But like it's still cool because instead of it like pretending that it's something original when everybody on the 
planet secretly fucking knows it's not. This at least just expands the universe and just gives us more to play around with, and that's why I like it. And so far, this is balling. A laptop age? I don't know. <laughs> this was a possible weapon used for hacking Becky's computer-sized brain when she decided to chase me down. The bottom left corner of the keyboard was with the words, Property owned by Jason. Written in B-roll, Catherine, 23 female. Catherine was a charity fundraiser who was very naive and didn't speak often. She was going out with Natalie to a restaurant until she was missing when Natalie went to a bar and was distracted by the quiz show playing on the TV. The landlord claimed that the black figure came in and took away, it took her away for science. What the fuck does that mean? Never to be seen again. She was injected with a chemical and is now brainwashed so she could be made into a factory worker to continuously clone guests for their own choosing. I bet you a hundred million dollars that's the same shit that Amazon be doing. Okay, if you don't count the bonuses, we've technically made it to the halfway point. And honestly, so far, I gotta say, I'm actually digging this, you know. I don't think it's really all that bad. I think that visually looks really nice. Sound-wise, it's really nice. And lore-wise, hey, I don't think it's too bad. There's no, like, like major typos or just, like, over-the-top boring sentences you know what I mean like it's just fine there's a couple of capitalization problems but that's really it and how can I be mad when I'm hitting up with this much fucking juice all right baby break it down like oh it sounds magical oh it sounds magical uh see we got cooking cooking with the melodios Ooh. My. Oh, she's like a horrifying strings. My God. She's like a bass or a cello or some kind of shit. And I really like the design too. I actually did this a lot. You know, this is fucking heavy. I like this. I got coffee on the screen. I didn't even see that. Hang on. Wait, I got to clean that up too now. Are you fucking kidding me? God. It sounds so evil. You know what I mean? Like the, wait, wait. Hold up, that's your fucking boy! Wait a minute, hang on, no, 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 lad, you, you're throwing my ass in the mix? I'm in this! Okay, well now, now you've just thrown a whole fucking wrench in the operation, lad, because aren't I in this universe already as the corrupt box version? The one with the shotgun, the one with little baby Timothy? So who the fuck is this dweeb? Ooh! Got an interesting little noise! Okay! Oh my god, I got coffee on the other fucking screen! Holy shit! I love, like, this B-plot that we have with my damn coffee. Just my shenanigans with my coffee is like a B-plot to this fucking story, man. I love it. <laughs> it's a side quest. Who the fuck is that? Sorry, Giffany's face is huge. My god. We got a cheeky little lad right here with a guitar spitting some juice. Okay, I can fuck with that. That ain't too shabby. That is not too shabby in this light. All right, baby, last melody. What we got? Come on. It's bittersweet. It's bittersweet because this is not really creepy sound-wise, but it is fire. The guy's got mold on his eyes. Oh, this one's great. Holly, age 10. All right, cool. I never would take big risks if it wasn't for my little sister praising me for my hard work. I found her at Posy Co. locked in a chip. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a zero to a hundred in sentences. And she won't speak to me anymore. That's a clone, bitch. After a few hours, I felt bad for the experiment. She didn't deserve to be a part of. So I drew a picture of her, showing our love we shared along the way, knowing I would always be by her side, even if she did get bungled. But she just expresses no emotion, like I was the one who changed her. But I didn't. I felt angry. So I searched everywhere for who did this to my sister, but no luck. I will be back, Holly. Please. Stay with me, even if you don't recognize me anymore. That is depressing as shit, actually. You know what? This one's cooler than hell. I like this one a lot. Oh, this one got like a sticky note on it. Giffany, 18 in game years. Fair. Giffany was a character from a video game I, <laughs> I made once before Mr. X came in and brought her into the real world via demonic rituals. She seeks my blood so I can become her boyfriend. She's a stalker herself and wants my soul. I mean, I think she's cool, but... <laughs> but <laughs> I think she's cool. But I think going out with the computer is a weird option, you know? I mean, if you could physically touch them, I say they're fair game. You know, that's that's what I, that's that's my rule on it. I would have erased her file if I knew she was a threat ever since he had been part of my life. All right, great. So the he is clearly the dickhead. Watch it be like the actual the he. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot. 
I forgot that I'm in this. Oh, <laughs> Meester was an internet blogger. No, I'm not. Who suffered the same fate as my cousin for the same reason of being aware of Mr. X's pardon. Now I constrain him in rope so he can't attack his significant other. Lovely. I'm trying what I can to undo this mysterious cloaked bloke's action. I noticed back before he was corrupted by the machine, he often describes my coworkers as either baby girl or adorably ass looking friend of pauses. What the fuck is the second one? I actually thought he was probably the coolest bloke I have ever met. What do you mean thought? Until a shadow separated him from his significant other to become another monster that had claimed to be canon to everything. Where else has he been while I was too busy trying to survive? This is bullshit, man. This is ass. Lillian, 18, baby. All right, Lillian was a goth girl who always wanted to learn how to play guitar from when she was six years old. It turns out she's a relative of Neister's wife. Yo, oh wait, so this is Lilac's relative. Ooh. I noticed she started to change personality since the wife of Neister was, okay, great. What was, was Kerblungle at a concert while performing on stage. So this is canon to Oraneo then. So this really does just take, okay, cool, yeah. So she's been getting bad depression lately and wants to see her in the afterlife at specific times. To be honest, I did feel bad at the time. That's when I took the opportunity to adopt her for the time being until any more news of her family is traced. Now she sits in my office and keeps my company so I don't have to look at Jose that often. That's great, you know, that's lovely. You know, we found out that uh, cheeky little Lilac has another relative and um, phenomenally done what they what has happened to them. The main man, Kane, 37. He looks like a dork. I was left trapped by several clones trying to take me away from my family. That was then this guy introduced himself by smashing a glass window to the side of me in the most badass way possible. He was a distant relative of mine who was always left begging for a piece of that action. And that ass. So he warned me, John and Lillian, to take cover under the table as he shot all the clones that surrounded us. The only one who escaped was Jose. Since they were a stranger who had their own tricks, but he was longing to do what he could to finish them off. Since he knew they were irritating Pawsey for hours, now his mission is to protect the trio from danger, even at drastic measures. Bet you a million bucks this is the guy who caused everything. I just got such a fucking vibe about this guy, dude. He just seems too perfect. He just seems too good. Alright, lads, now we got the cheeky voices! Okay, not too shabby, not too shabby. Cheeky little female choir, you can never go wrong with those. Look at this terrifying bastard. I wanna enter his mouth. Oh, oh she's putting the scissor in her neck. Mr. TV, hey, Mr. TV, hey. Ooh, wait a minute. Hold up. Nah, shut the fuck up, bro. This ain't a damn voice. This is a this is a fire ass little melody. Bam! Hey, shit! Hey, bam! What? Fuck! Let's go, boys. <laughs> Shit's intense, man. Okay, hang on, hang on. What do you say? Because I can't even hear you, bro. The cops are whirring, electrifying, star into my silent realms. What's the point of this? Where do I just go from this? Replicating family. Sounds like a terrible Christmas song. <laughs> Did he just say I hope meeting Satan goes well? All right, now the last boy. I want to him on his own. <laughs> what the fuck is this? What? That's lovely. I love it when it's horrifying bullshit. The facility has been cleansed by her sanity. The fuck does that mean? The outskirts have been wrapped in her own duffel bag and were dragged to the edges of the world. <laughs> her mind is built by abuse. Okay, great. And blends in with victims, so she is seen as normal. She hides the fact that she was the one who burned up the school full of yup and hides under her collection of people's toenails to be made into hard-boiled sweets to sell to the public. She ran into Posse Co. being chased by police and cut off some wires powering the machine after a mental breakdown and she didn't want to go back to solitary confinement. What in the absolute fucking cabbage shit did I just read? I was gonna say that this mod feels cool because, like, it, it feels based in reality a little bit. Like, it's not, like, goofy sci-fi shit with, like, over-the-top, like, just killers and things like that. And, uh, this one just changed everything. The, the Baby Girl Guinea, man, just all kinds of issues, bro. I'm starting to run out of coffee if anybody wants an update on how that's going. Jason was a hacker who was impaled in the head by a sign John found on the side of, on the side when he was confronted 
confronted by him and Becky. He expected to be a member of a cult that Mr. X formed long ago. He expected to be a monster from a cult that Mr. X formed long ago to gain info so that he can go back to the figure and plan his next attack on the facility. However, the document we found on Jason's laptop claimed he was never in a cult to begin with. Instead, he was Haley's ex. Ooh, who is after the money we raised from our experiments so he can get himself a new convertible. Lovely. And live on the coast away from this nonsense and sell illegal drugs to the public. Th this guy just guys, he has his priorities straight, but now he is dead. <laughs> but now because he is dead, he can't do that. So this info is pointless now. Great. Lovely. Thanks. Natalie, 14. I'm not a fan of a 14 year old being in this. Catherine's friend who was yep. by a member of the cult by receiving skull fracture and having a TV dropped on her face. Now she's a lightheaded walking corpse who has a short fuse and longs for revenge. That sounds kind of super badass. Posse. Oh shit, this is so this is the first character, but all destroyed and shit. Posse's first prototype. The only goal was to use his own DNA and put it in another body. As he left it, he went back and the plan had worked for a short time. He was then sent to a chamber moments before the police showed up to catch Guinea and had been frightened with shock and started to learn to become a terrible mortal to society. His face began to fluff up and darken with the shadows he had faced when the incident happened. He will try again the very next day. Bum, 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 bum. Description, he hung in there. All right. All right, lads. And now we got three cheeky little bonuses up top. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create like just like a basic little beat to start out with. Maybe just like a melody or two. And then we're just going to go from there. We're going to do them one at a time. Let's go. Oh, of course. <laughs> Woo. Hang on. Wait a second. Wait. I put the wrong fucking people in there. There we go. <laughs> Oh, dude, just that little one-time string is amazing. Oh, I love how slow it is, genuinely. Oh, look! It's the main man, Dave! The main man! I think that's what we're on. I genuinely lost count. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have you. <laughs> Oh, that's damn terrifying. Gotta love that. Yes, sirree. Yes, sirree, baby. Lilac 44. Lilac was a talented musician who was one day kerplungled on stage by someone who escaped a burning office building. Ooh, uh, the continuity. Love it. Lillian looks up to her and prays sometimes that one day she could come back, reincarnated, and do some kind of duet together. Meester missed her a lot after the incident occurred, but now, as he's corrupted, he's thirsty for someone much more close to him. She did her best. My God. The main man, Dave. Negative balls is what we dub him as now considering I've been hanging around with a couple of mates of mine for a long time. Dave was my best mate before he was the one who brought terror to my company because I blew up his facility, Ferrotech. Out of pure rage, I only blew it up because I got greedy. I got greedy and had a thirst for all of the money, for all of the tourists coming in and exploring around the place at induction day. I already told you I had a problem and it hasn't gone away. Thanks, Becky. Now he's after my stuff as well. My God. Lovely. Everything burns. Kirsty, age 11. Everything burns. Great. Top secret code 4269. We'll be back soon, Kurt. Your sister loves you very much. Okay, so we do have another 4269. Is this fucking the dude from Express again? I can't believe it. What do you sound like? I figured. <laughs> Locke was found on the 26th of July as an escapee from Ferrotech's factory who was running around in a straitjacket looking for a train to drive. <laughs> that was when I met him by complete accident since I was trying to stop the machine from making more clones or what Easter calls them bitches. <laughs> considering it's the best way of describing them as. He lunged at me and tried to bite my eyes out. Bite my eyes out? Holy fuck! Until Dave came in with a fishing net, caught him and dragged him back to Pharaoh. He got caught in a net like a Saturday morning cartoon character. I still wonder to this very day if he's okay, but we'll just have to wait until further notice. He says nothing about this. P.S. This is before Pharaoh blew up. That's fun. All right, now let's create some damn fire. All right, lads. Okay, baby, break it down. Okay, lads. 
Okay, lads, break it down, break it down around town. Break it down, show me around. Break it down, low it down. Oh, baby, show me around. Armor Boy, so final thoughts right there, man. I absolutely love this one. I really do like how it expands in the overall universe of Orneo and just gives you more shit to do in that universe. As well as, like, actually making everything canon and, like, having the continuity keep going and just, it's just good, you know? I'm not sure how memorable this mod is going to be, like, long term, just with everybody in the whole community and the whole bit, but just in the moment, I really like this. It has great designs, great visuals, great lore. I really like this. My only real negative is that I kind of wish that the music had a bit more of a scary vibe instead of it just being a bumping beat, but that really is just a nitpick because this mod is great. So, I'm gonna end it off right there. So, if you enjoyed this kind of content, then the buttons are down there. You know what to do, and uh, have a good one, so goodbye! See ya!